Okay, my friends, this is the last session. I want to remind you that my name is Mrs. Gordon and I am the school social worker here. And I am here to help astronaut students that are struggling emotionally and need somebody to talk to. Or maybe you're having problems at home and you or your family could use some resources. On the screen is my email and also where I sit in the media center. Why don't you write that down on your avid note page before we begin? You never know when you or a friend may need some assistance. So our last life session, number four, stressed out and what to do about it. That's a good one, right? Because everybody in this building and probably across the world can say they have experienced a great deal of stress this year. So it's good to be able to identify, understand, and manage it. Teen stress can be complicated, intense, and hard to manage. Let's talk about why. As teens, you're kind of stuck. You're not kids anymore, but you're not quite adults either. On top of school, you may be juggling adult-like responsibilities. You may have a job, be in a personal relationship, may have duties at home like watching younger siblings or mowing the lawn, cooking, cleaning, etc. You may also have a lot of extra uh, curricular activities and you're trying to squeeze the social life in there too. And scheduling all this and time management and handling these things, it's all uh, different and new to you. And anything new that we're not good at causes stress. Becoming a teen um, gives you a whole new range of emotions that we were talking about um, in our last session, and we haven't quite really learned how to identify and properly communicate them. So all these responsibilities and emotions, they all just get jumbled up inside us and make us feel like a a ball of stress, right? Am I sounding right? Okay, who likes roller coasters? Who gets freaked out on roller coasters? All people react differently. Some love the rush, the excitement of the unexpected drops and turns. Others experience the most extreme panic and stress as they feel they're plummeting towards their death. And then others just kind of react somewhere in the middle, right? This roller coaster is probably one you haven't been on before. It's in Canada, but we're going on it today. We're going on a virtual ride at least. But I want you to really imagine being on it and aware of how you're feeling uh, both physically and emotionally. Okay, here we go.
All right. You did it. How do you feel? Did anyone get that tense feeling right at the beginning? You know, like all those, all roller coasters seem to have that long, slow, suspenseful ride up with the same click, 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 click sound. And you're not sure exactly when something is going to happen or what is going to happen. But you know, you just know something's about to happen. And what's your reaction? Is it fear? Is it excitement? Is it suspense, anxiety, anticipation? Going on a roller coaster is like choosing to put yourself through a stressful experience. And like a roller coaster, everybody experiences stress differently. Physical signs of stress can be si similar to that feeling that we feel in our body when we're on a roller coaster. During stress, our heart beats faster, we start to, our breathing is, becomes like short, and we, tense, we sense that anxiety just building up in our body. We can have tight muscles that results in maybe a stick, stiff neck or back pain. You may feel lightheaded or have a headache, sick to your stomach, sweating or have a dry mouth. There are emotional signs um, of ways we act to stress. Sometimes um, if we have that go-to emotion that I was talking about in the last session, when we stress, we always go to maybe angry. Stress makes me angry. Stress always makes me sad or want to cry. Okay? Here are some of those emotional signs of stress. Anger, frustration, irritability, depression, helplessness, anxiety, fear, panic, confusion, and overreaction. Okay? Sometimes we've Confusion is kind of like, have you ever felt like you're in that zombie stage and you just can't even think? You just feel like a fog? Uh, the other thing is overreaction. What does that mean? When you are in a stressful situation, um, the littlest things you can overreact, kind of freak you out. Um, so those are some things that, those signs that you are dealing with stress. So where does it come from? Well, there's external stress and there's internal stress. Let's start with external stress. Stress that comes from outside of us. Time. Maybe we don't feel like we have enough time in the day to get all the things we need to get done, especially with deadlines and due dates. The amount of work. We just may feel like we don't have, uh, it's just too much. It, we can't attain, we can't get all of that work done. Maybe we don't feel like we have enough support. Shout out to my e-learners out there, right? The technology is hard to figure out. And sometimes we just want someone to be right there with us, helping us, who is knowledgeable and just physically shows us how to do it. A lot of us feel like we don't have the support we need in many areas of our life. And we're dealing with difficult, hard things on our own, and it causes stress. Official statements, policies, directions, an example of that would be the arrows on the floor. The new, that new policy was stressful at first, right? Problems with relationships, maybe a girlfriend or a boyfriend, family, classmates, those that all are, might be causing you stress. Not to mention uh, we're in a global pandemic and our nation is in a state of unrest. Lots of things out there that can cause us stress. 
remember our emotions are powerful and we need to um, realize that they affect our actions. Uh, sometimes we want to pull our hair out, punch something, bust out crying. These are ways that we try to release or avoid stress. They could be uh, suppression techniques. Um, we just want to avoid it. So we don't do our schoolwork. We can't deal with work, so we just skip it. Uh, we sleep way too much. We, de um, we want to deny that we have these feelings. And even though it may temporarily help with the stress, in the end, it causes more work, more comp conflict, and the stress keeps building. So we've got to be careful. Let's talk about the external stresses next. Stress that comes from inside of us. Sometimes we just have hard decisions to make. And those decisions, sometimes there's really no good option. And that can stress us out on what to do. We feel pressure to perform. Where are my perfectionists out there? I know you're out there, you're stressed out. We feel insecure, not good about some, we don't feel good at some of our roles that we have or our abilities in maybe our relationship, in a job or a particular class. And we can feel loneliness, feeling alone in handling all these hard things. We may have disappointments, maybe disappointed in yourself, disappointed in another person or situation, or you have somebody disappointed in you. And those all cause stress. Priorities, so many things, you can't do them all at one time. How do you pick and choose? It's hard to prioritize. And then, because of all of this, there are conflicts between your different roles. I can't do everything. Um, should I listen to my parents or my friends? Should I invest time in my homework or time talking to my girlfriend or boyfriend? See, uh, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know and experience. This is hard. Life can be hard and really heavy to manage. So, how do we deal? Well, I wish I could give you a magic answer. I can't. It's kind of like losing weight, getting physically fit. There's no magic answer. There's just the basic right things. So let's talk about it. One, take good care of yourself. You've got to maintain a daily routine, eat, exercise, and sleep. And I know for a fact, you teens are not good at this. You are staying up till 2, 3 a.m. on electronics, you're skipping meals, you're eating unhealthy meals, but you need energy and endurance to take on life. Sometimes life feels like a battle. The ROTC class would tell you the mil that military, they don't just give you a uniform and send you to war. You have to prepare first, you have to train, you have to be in great shape. And that's true to handle stress as well. If not, when that pressure hits, I'm telling you, chances are you're going down. So we got to take good care of ourselves. Two, learn to relax. What do you like to do to relax? Some people like to run, use art, music, play a sport or watch a sport meditate, yoga, whatever it is. Take time for yourself to do what you like because you know what, you deserve it. Do some things that make you happy. I promise you, your list will still be there when you're done. Three, identify the cause of stress. Okay, what is the main thing that's causing you the most stress right now? Write it down. Is it external? Is it internal? Um, how is it making you feel? Sometimes just getting that all out of your head and onto paper helps. 
And when you write it out, then you can kind of look for ways that you can solve the stress or at least cope. Okay, four, create positive mental image. That, that kind of sounds weird. What does that mean? Well, it can mean two things. One, you can imagine in your head the stressful situation you're in and then think about positive actions or a positive outcome. Okay, let's say you're sitting there um, totally freaked out about a test tomorrow, you're overwhelmed studying, and you're just in this panic. Try to sit there and take a minute, breathe, imagine yourself. Imagine yourself finishing the test and walking out of that classroom confident, knowing that you did well and that you're proud of yourself, that you gave it your all. That could be one way of mental image. Another is called happy place imagery. That sounds fun, right? Uh, do you have a happy place? A place that you maybe have gone before that just makes you feel uh, happy and relaxed? Maybe it's on the beach at sunset, for example. So when you're stressed into that unhealthy anxiety, take a personal timeout. Just take a time out, close your eyes, take a breath, picture, really picture your happy place in your mind and that you are there right now in your happy place. Feel the wind in, in your hair, feel the sand under your feet, feel that sun slightly burning on your cheeks. Really visualize it and jump into that place that makes you happy and away from the stress. Number five, motivate yourself. You know, sometimes we just gotta give ourselves a pep talk. Now that you're older, you may not always have someone right there giving you a pep talk and motivating you, but everyone needs a good pep talk now and again. So I know I'm telling you to talk to yourself. I have I've, a I've habit of, of asking you to do that. But whether you are aware of your inner voice or not, it's talking to you. One time I saw a kid, a stressed out kid, and he dropped a pencil and he said, I'm such an idiot. And I picked up that pencil and I just looked at him in the eyes. And I said, no, no, you're not. You're a great guy. You, you just dropped a pencil. But what we don't realize is that we all have that self-talk and it can be so negative. We may need to pull out that index card that we wrote on lesson two. It might be time to uh, sing that over ourselves a couple times in front of the mirror. Six. Talk to someone. When those pep talks aren't working, find a friend, a family member, or an adult. You don't have to be alone. Seek someone out who you can talk to. Talk it through. At least somebody that makes you laugh. You got someone that makes you laugh. Everybody needs a good laugh. It really does help with stress. Others it's more serious. You know your level of stress. If it is beyond the breaking point, you need to find help. Because remember, being successful, yeah, it's working hard and doing your best and going for it. It's also having a good life and being happy. And so you need to find that balance. To end the last session and to be real about our stress, I thought we use, shouldn't use straight lines anymore. This AVID strategy is called Mind Map. You can see the example on the top right hand corner. It's a fun kind of crazy brainstorming so anything goes. Let that stress out all over the paper. First describe your stress in a box in the middle 
like mine is in yellow. And then branch out as much as you want, answering the following questions that are shown on the screen. Use your Cornell note paper to complete this assignment. And when you're done, remember to keep all your notes in your binder in front of your first tab. Teachers will be looking to see that it's there during your binder checks. Before we begin this last assignment, I want you to take a look at that essential question that was printed on the top of your Cornell notes. I really hope these lessons have helped you understand the importance of values, self-respect, emotions, and your stress level, and how, how important they are to your personal success and happiness. This is the last video. Again, my name is Mrs. Gordon, and my office is in the Media Center. During lunch, you can find me downstairs near Mr. Deese's classroom and Mr. Ke Mrs. Kels Kelso's classroom around 2.43. Now, let's start the assignment. This will conclude the lesson. Y'all have a great year, and feel free to come find me and say hello.